Three, two, two one. one. Multi-stars. <laughs> My name is Jesse. Okay, fuck. And uh aka Butter. And welcome to a review. A spoiler review for a big movie. Big so movie. Big. Uh the biggest movie of twenty twenty one. It is twenty twenty two when we're recording this. But yeah. Um, it's <laughs> Spider-Man No Way Home, the latest Marvel film. Um, what number is this now? You know? What, of Marvel what films? Marvel movie, yeah. Well, okay. I, this is fortunate because I listened to our Marvel, um, some Marvel stuff recently. And you I think that Marvel stuff? Our, our, like our podcast <laughs> where we talk oh. about Marvel. <laughs> And we we have I this conversation. The on, but I don't watch it. I just listen to it. I just listened. I just listened. I just listened to Civil War and Endgame back to back, like a podcast, uh, like um, a, a radio drama. <laughs> yeah, so confusing. But I think that this makes this thirty five or thirty seven. What? No, In no, thirty thirty six or thirty seven. In the MCU. MCU. I think so. I don't think you're right. I'm not right. No. Oh, okay. We'll Definitely not. I don't think we're in the 30s. <laughs> you think you're in the 20s? Yeah, of the, the MCU movies, starting yeah. with Iron Man. Okay, number of MCU movies. I always get this number wrong. I always think I know, and then I never know. 27. Okay, yeah, you're right. It says say, 27. I would be like, if we were like in the 30s, <laughs> I think I would have to like end you the know, podcast now. Be like, you, know right. why, you know why I said 37? Because in that episode I was referring to just a second ago, I think I said 37 in that. And then you corrected me just like this and said there's actually 27 in the MCU. Oh, we've already done this before. <laughs> yeah, I've, I think I think that this happens well, to there, me every time. I think, uh, I don't, okay, I don't know where the is. I think there's like 40 Marvel Yes, yes. Based on Marvel property. Um, yes. But yeah, yes. so this is the 27th Marvel movie. <laughs> Wow, that's, that's crazy. crazy. Um, and this is the let's see, the third Spider Man Marvel movie. This is the ending of the Marvel, uh, of the MCU Spider Man trilogy. But it's like the I think the seventh Spider Man film uh, to come out. Um, Raimi trilogy, the two amazing Spider Man movies, yeah, uh, the um, animated Spider Man movie. Okay, yeah. Seven Spider Man movies, lots of Spider Man, <laughs> lots of Marvel movies, uh, franchises. Goddamn. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, but uh, I was super excited to see this movie. I mean, I think the last podcast that we posted, one of the last ones that we did was um, The Friends Dispatch. And when we recorded that, podcast the trail the full trailer had just come out oh yeah we were so we hyped talked about the, the trailer for like half the podcast so it was like an mm-hmm. hour we talked about <laughs> the trailer and the speculation of the movie and um we were very excited because i if you guys listen to the podcast i like spider man uh <laughs> i'm a big fan of uh spider man probably my favorite superhero he's in some of my favorite you know superhero movies Spider-Man 2 might be my favorite superhero movie I don't know I think that's kind of that might be a whole podcast on its own what's our favorite comic book movie but yeah. Spider-Man 2 is definitely up there for me those Randy films like mean a lot to me um growing up they were hugely inspirational to me they're you also know, good all as time. fuck they're, they're good dope. as shit they still hold up yeah. Um, and uh, the Amazing Spider Man films didn't long as much. Um, those don't, those suck. Definitely disappointments. 
um, and uh, the, the anime part of the film we absolutely loved. Oh, that, that, that one was very good. Yeah. Um, and uh, but so these two um MCU movies I like a lot. Um, mm-hmm. I I like them quite a bit. I thought Homecoming was a lot of fun, and I thought Far From Home was also tons of fun too. And I was I was really looking forward to this film for a lot of reasons. Uh, and uh, how going into this, what were your expectations like going into this? You know, you know, I I had the I had a hesitancy because it was the problem that all movies kind of have or all kind of big blockbusters about being the most exciting, having the most things and Uh just adding more and more and more. Yeah. Yeah. And it had the same problem. I was worried that it was going to have the same problem that Spider-Man three and amazing (laughs) Spider-Man two would have where they just throw everything in there and it would just be a ginormous mess. So I was really, I was really nervous about that because um, I liked right. I liked uh, Homecoming really and Far From that. Home a lot. I, I liked those a lot, but um, I also and I was worried that this one was going to suck ass because it was just going to be too much and too big of a scale. Yeah. But also, I was re- kind of comfortable with the idea of them taking this on because Marvel has done a little movie called Infinity War and Endgame where right. they showed that they right. can make watchable and actually pretty darn good films when they throw literally everything on uh-huh. there right. so um yeah i i was trying to keep my my expectations pretty I think, even i think i was too i mean even if you go listen to the when we talk about the trailer yeah know, we're pretty I level-headed definitely like i was very excited but i was also kind of like worried about it because um you know yeah this is gonna be a spoiler release so um, if you haven't seen the movie, don't listen to this. <laughs> go, go watch the movie. You probably already seen it. This movie's made like over a billion dollars already. It's not even yeah. a month in. It's like it's been out for like a month, made like a lot of money. People are still seeing it. Um, but yeah, that's your warning. We're gonna spoil this movie. But what, what, I think what you're referring to too is that you know this film is bringing in. The villain from the Randy universe, the you know, they're, they're it's cross pollinating all the universes, and like it's funny, I didn't really think about like Spider Man 3 and the Amazing Spider Man 2 because you're right, like they tried to do that in those movies, mm-hmm. and that couldn't work very well. So <laughs> you're right, but I was, I didn't even think about that. Um, but yeah, that was definitely a factor and probably why I was a little hesitant. Um, but I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell I'm here to tell you people out there. This movie is really good. It's really <laughs> it's really good. And I really, really like this movie. And a lot of people love this movie. <laughs> um, yeah. This is yeah. Uh, this is a um I think that this is more than, for me, personally, as a Spider Man fan, this was more of a fulfilling theater experience than I had watching something like Endgame, um, for example. Just because of what we're going to get into, this is, this movie is something that I never would have thought in a million years that I would ever see. Like, and not only like, you know, spoiler, Tilly Aguirre and Andrew Garfield and all these villains from all the previous Marvel you know, Spider-Man movies being in this movie is one thing, but how they handled all these characters and the story that this film like, just is with all these characters, I was very impressed honestly on how this film was written and was just impressed by how well they're actually able to tell a story with all of these uh crazy universes and the first my first impression coming out of it i'm gonna bring up the star wars sequel trilogy for, for, for a second uh <laughs> interesting comparison 
I think you're going to agree with me. Um, I'm going to compare these two phrases, all right? <laughs> the first film, the Homecoming and the Force Awakens, both great films set up, you know, you know, Spider-Man in the MCU, in the MCU context. And the first thing I thought coming out of this movie was, so that's how to end the trilogy. Because this third film, to me, improves the other two. Like, going back and watching the other two, it actually enhances those films because you know where uh, the Spider-Man is going to go by the end of the trilogy. The opposite of the, the Star Wars trilogy, where the first two were such a cool kind of setup, in my opinion, and the third one completely dropped the ball so hard that the other two are worse because of that. Yeah, and they're not as good. And this was to me the complete totally. opposite because I like the MCU films a lot, like the Far From Home and Homecoming. I like those movies when I first saw them, but now I think I look back on them a little bit better because of just how well they, the Spider Man was ended up being developed through the course of these three films. So that was like my first thing that I thought, like coming out of it. Yeah, was like oh wow, like. <laughs> Star Wars fucked up. That was, that was the first thing I thought. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah, they really did. They really did. Oh man. <laughs> but what did you? What were your first impressions going out of it? Yeah, I so mean, I, would, I would assume that you also liked it. <laughs> yes, I did. I liked it a lot. I thought it was. Um, I thought it was super duper fun and yeah. really and really well written, and that all of the crazy things that they wanted to put in there actually worked. Yeah, um, right. I think that uh, ultimately the story is kind of conventional and simple, which is understandable when they are trying yeah. to add all of the crazy things that they wanted to add in there that mm -hmm. they did um so it's just to save the world story right yeah. but um they just kind of they just throw in all and then it's also about peter maturing while mm -hmm. he's saving the world and becoming the real spider-man at the end and then yeah. they just throw in all of this crazy meta shit that ends up somehow working uh right. <laughs> at, at the end yeah, i think that's that like the cra yeah we'll get into that but like the meta thing i was surprised by like how little there are moments in this movie that <laughs> are a little too little, like they wink at the at the camera a little bit uh, mm -hmm. with certain lines that some characters say. But for the most part, I was kind of like impressed by how like seriously it was taken. Like that these come from different universes. It wasn't like I don't know. It didn't feel like it was like referencing too hard the Randy films or yeah or the Lazy Spider Man movies, you know. It um, it did it felt surprisingly authentic in yeah, the Yeah, like that was something film. that like really kind of blew me away because that's hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not I, easy. Yeah, yeah, and I mean I think that was like the real strength of the movie that I liked a lot. Like the the characterization of all of the characters yeah. was just very human and really just super funny and likable. All the characters were really likable and yeah. they all oh, yeah. really played off of each other really well. So it all felt very real. It all felt like they were in that world together. Absolutely. I think this movie uh, in terms of Spider-Man, I like the Sam Raimi films better than all of the Tom Holland. I'm not going to um, ever do like, <laughs> like I'm always going to like the Raimi films. Yeah. Um, just because um, nostalgia purposes. And I think, um, I mean, if I had the biggest criticism of this MCU trilogy, is that while I think they all look good, they all look great, but they're competently directed and they're really well, there are some really cool sequences and shots, especially in this movie. Um, but, um, you know, I think I prefer the style of the Sam Raimi, and I could see someone going on the opposite, because I read re watching those two Spider-Man films, especially if you're, like, 13 or something growing up, you might think that those movies are really corny, you know? Mm -hmm. like, like, super cheesy, really corny, because it's, it's a different tone than a lot of superhero movies that are coming out now. Yeah. Uh, but for me, that's just kind of 
and I think you too, I like that tone more, and I think Sam Raimi just had such an interesting take on Spider-Man. You know? Yeah, a hundred, um, hundred. I, I totally agree. I think the big the re- the reason why I mentioned that is just because I think Sam Raimi Spider-Man is just better storytelling, and that's really yeah. the thing I like the most about uh, movies in general. General is the storytelling, mm-hmm. uh, but I think the argument is totally true that. Um, especially like the tone and special effects of those older wilder spider-mans are going to just continue to be more dated and this marvel and it's and it's a very different feeling than these marvel movies um yeah so so i just mentioned that just like on a spider-man spectrum uh like spider-verse and raimi's are kind of like top tier for me but this movie's really good i don't know how i like this a lot better than far from home um i don't know how i would compare it to homecoming i need to compare i need to watch that again but I really see all three of these films, like you were saying, more as a unit than as like a. This is like the press movies. Yeah. Like they really work together really I well. Say, I will say, this is why I love those early films. <laughs> Better trilogy. <laughs> the Better. I mean, yeah. Yeah. You know, as much as I, there are aspects to it that I genuinely love. It, 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 it's disappointing. You yeah. Know, it's not, it's not, it's not, uh, yeah. I should. I should mention. What, to the, to the trilogy, you know? I should mention that when I say the Raimi films, I mean one in Spider Man right. and Spider Man right. Two, not Spider Man yeah. Three. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I so think yeah, in so, the and, so and I also want to just say in comparison to other Marvel movies, uh, I know you were mentioning before how this might be one of your favorite Marvel movies, uh-huh. and I think this is like kind of up there on the list for me too. All the Sp- yeah. Spider Mans are. Um, I think yeah, I like you know, that's true. Like I, I agree, I can agree with that. All of them, like you know, not just this film. Uh, yeah, they're like, they're all, just all of them are definitely up there for me too. Because Tom Holland Spider Man is just so good. He's just yeah. so good, and any situation, like any scene that he's in, he's pretty enjoyable to watch. Oh, yeah. You know, there's yeah. not really a lot of dead scenes that are just kind of painful or awful, which. On yeah. a lot of Marvel films, there are that, you know, there are that. And it's I still funny think that you say that too, that uh like I love Tom Holland in both of the films, but this one to me, like really solidified, like this guy is awesome as far as yeah. Cause I love because spoiler, like this is really the movie where he becomes Spider Man. Uh the other two should be called like Spider Boy, Spider Boy Homecoming, <laughs> Spider Boy Far From Home. This is when he becomes Spider Man. Yeah, um, and that's like what I was alluding to earlier. He's kind of the genius of this trilogy to me. It's something that like was genuinely unexpected. The way that this film ended and the yeah. way that this film goes, I thought was you know it's hard to surprise. I think audiences in general now uh, with like Marvel movies, especially. So it was super impressive that I actually like did not see how like the ending of this movie coming like at all. Right, like, I don't right. think I do not think that they're taking Peter in this direction. But I am. I was so happy the way that this movie ended. And yeah, it was cool. Tom it was Holland cool going forward. Yeah. Because it wasn't like, um, I guess, like the surprise ending is the. We'll talk about this more, but just briefly yeah. mentioning is forgetting that Peter's existence. We'll explain. Everybody forgets. Everybody forgets <laughs> which, Peter. Yeah. yeah, but like uh, the real, which is kind of like the twister surprise. But the surprise you're talking about is like that emotional development that he had. That direction, I yeah. feel like he's he's going in, which was yeah. cool because that's not really like a. Um, like a Shyamalan twist kind of surprise. It was just like oh, a really, a no, no, no. It's, it's just this, it was just this really, it's like, oh, I didn't see it going there, but it it's feels really time. right. It <laughs> just feels really, really right. It's a really good story. Like it's just like a good development of a character. <laughs> like, and yeah. what's unexpected is that, like I had accepted up until this point that this was a different part of it. Like, this is the Marvel version of Spider-Man. Like, he's not going to be, you know, the Uncle Ben's out in the, in the picture. You know, if you didn't notice, no one told him up until this point, with great power comes great responsibility. No one had said right. that. So he was a different version of Spider-Man, so I accepted that. But this film, like, 
like leading, like basically turning it head into the, the the character that we all know and love and what he should be. Yeah. Um, was just like it was so jarring. I was just like not like oh shit, like that's yeah. that's what this whole trilogy is leading yeah, up. Yeah, it's to. a good point. You know? it's a, it, awesome. Yeah. You know, I want to I want to touch on something real quick, which is not movie specific. So we can we can move from this pretty fast. Yeah. But um, it, it's kind of yeah. got me thinking. <laughs> it's got me thinking about Spider-Man's origin story in the Marvel uh-huh. Universe, because um, I remember one of the really refreshing things that we talked about about Homecoming was how they skipped the origin story scene because we've uh-huh. seen it so yeah. many times. But now. Because of this development of seeing how he sort of becomes Spider-Man over this course of three movies, uh-huh. it's making me wonder about like, well, what was his origin story without Ben? What was his beginning days as Spider-Man? It's like, well, do you think those I were think just like? Me, it's this trilogy. Like, like it's interesting yeah. to see how we all we didn't see was because in the beginning of Homecoming, he's like in like a homemade suit. He's like not really Spider-Man, and Tony right. Stark is the one that gives him the suit and gives him, you know, this, you know, he becomes part of the Avengers, he's under Tony's wing. Yeah. And him having to, and he didn't have to deal with um, any adversity in his life. Like, the big thing about Spider-Man is loss, and he's a lonely guy. Uh, yeah. in the comic books, and I think the Randy films do a really good job of um, illustrating the loneliness of Peter, Peter yeah. Parker, especially in Spider-Man 2. Yeah, um, very but, true. Um, this, that's what I'm saying, is that like this whole trilogy is almost an origin story, a, a uniquely different origin story um, of this Peter Parker. Um, and that's, you know, that's what I think the, the, this whole, the previous two films, we were watching his origin story. Yeah, um, that's a good way. point. That's that's yeah. great. Yeah, I think you're right about that. I mean, because, I mean, because this is it the just movie. makes this sense. This film, No Way Home, is when he actually deals with some dark shit. Like, he yeah. has to, he deals with, you know, Aunt Mary dying, and he deals with, you know, having, and everybody forgetting about him. And yeah. At the end of this movie, he has no one. He has no one. He's alone, and he's he made, he makes the suit himself. You know, not getting it from Tony Stark or no one helping him. He's on his own. He's lonely, and he's fighting crime kind of in New York. That's how this yeah. ends. And it's just like, oh, like we watched this whole thing. It was leading up to this moment. You know? Yeah, um, yeah. That's yeah, and that's really cool because. It's almost um, the, like they had this idea from day one, you know? Yeah, I mean, they, they really, they re- honestly might have, because it's the same director who did it all the way through. I mean, that's, I, I, bravo. To, yeah. To, 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 that's an awesome idea, you know, yeah. the way that they took this character. And I mean, the other thing that's cool is how they sort of brought them back to the same themes of what you were saying, loneliness, responsibility, dealing mm-hmm. with death. Um, sort of trauma from death and that responsibility and how it sort of led up to those iconic Spider-Man themes, but in a, through that very Marvel context and, and actually bringing in the old Spider-Mans to sort of show how he was becoming them, but also to show how different he was from them was a real strength of the film, which I, you know, just you talk really hard to make that work. I was a good Spider-Man fan. This was like, this was this was orgasmic. It's just, <laughs> it's, just, it's just all that that we're describing is so emotional. I mean, this movie when I first saw it, it almost like I almost got teary eyed in certain moments because it's just so like well done and emotional at certain points. And I never would have thought that I would say that. You know, like there are, there are moments in Marvel films that obviously got to be emotionally like Iron Man dying and you know things like that. But this felt like really just struck me to my core. And it's probably because I'm a big Spider Man fan. I just love this character so much. Um but but yeah, I let's like get into kind of yeah. we didn't even mention like how kind of the, any of the story elements that we thought were, were cool and 
how the skull we will close out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's get um, let's get into the nitty gritty. So basically, uh, so another thing that I love about this trilogy too is that um the high school element, you know, and this film kind of carries that over where Peter and his friends are trying to get into college. <laughs> They're trying to get into MIT. Uh and I thought that was, you know, that was a cool element. But um and I think I don't know, maybe I guess Endgame kind of starts. I was gonna say, is this the first Marvel sequel to literally start at the end of the last movie? You know? Because this movie literally starts the the second Far From Home ends, you know? Um Yeah, I think, really matter. I mean, it's I cool. can't think of it, but yeah, that's really that's really that is true. That's cool. Yeah, and like, you know, that Mysterio reveals to the world that Peter Parker Spider Man. And I thought that, that whole opening scene was so like well handled, yeah. you know, where you know they, they're running away, MJ and Peter are running away from all these people, you know, like taking pictures of them and trying to, you know, um because that's something that would happen. Yeah. <laughs> people telling them and there's this like seeing it yesterday there's this funny moment where like he lands in the middle of these people and like he like like slaps a like a lady away from mj and she's like <laughs> 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 he's, he's like um but yeah and so that whole like the first beginning of this movie is basically him like <laughs> having to deal with the whole world being spider-man Honestly, yeah. that first part up to the point where he goes to see Doctor Strange, mm-hmm. I think that that is so well done. I think that's some of really like the well best. Done. I love the humor also that throughout that whole sequence. Super Honestly, funny. to me, that's like some of the best filmmaking in the movie because it just flows so well. It sets up everything so well and I, gets you that, that, absorbed uh, back into it. That long take of their of their apartment when. Uh, like happy and uh, <laughs> he's breaking up with him. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. And, like uh, Peter and MJ are like in their room, and it's that whole one take of people going by the apartment, and Peter's like th- closing all the windows, and they're like, you know, that was like watching that. I was like, oh shit! Like that's you don't see a lot of <laughs> like one takes like that. In, yeah, in the yeah. MCU. So I think it really stood out. Um, and I wanted to mention this to you. We haven't talked about this yet. Uh, the biggest surprise in this movie, unfortunately, Andrew Garfield and Tony McGuire, we kind of knew that they were going to be in this movie, but the big, like, holy shit, was Matt Murdock. Oh, yeah, yeah, Daredevil. yeah. That was fucking awesome. Like, I was, because I love that show, the Daredevil show, I think mm-hmm. that it was honestly one of the best things, in my opinion, that Marvel had ever done. And I was really s- sad to see it not, like, you know, the future of that Murdoch was so uncertain. You know, they made yeah. three seasons, the last season came out, I, I want to say, like, I don't even remember, like 2017 or something like that. Yeah, it was a while back. And it ended, I mean, it ended amazingly, but it's not like, it didn't end. Like, it was, it's like, he didn't, that we're not going to die or, like, you know. So, the whole idea that he was still in this universe. And Charlie Cox is so awesome as Matt Murdock. And I was like, I would love to see him come back, you know. I always have thought that. And him showing up in this is so fucking awesome. And I yeah. hope that, I don't know what they're going to do with Matt Murdock. I mean, I really, I pray to, God, that I don't know, Spider Man and Daredevil can have because they in the comics, they they're you know, they have so many comics together, Daredevil and Spider Man. And like, I think that would be so cool if they somehow with this new trilogy or with the new incarnation of the Tom Holland Spider Man movies that they need Daredevil come in and. And they need a, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, yeah, I would love yeah. that. But it was so awesome seeing him in this movie. Uh, just acknowledging, like, hey, this guy, he's still in this universe. He's still alive. 
and we're gonna do something with them, you know? Yeah, and it's pretty I love exciting. That moment too when, when, when <laughs> fucking Brent comes through the window and he presses it. And they're like, how'd you do that? I'm a really yeah. good lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was pretty cool. That was, uh, the, that was the biggest for me, the biggest like, holy shit. Like, I did not, that was the last thing I thought I was going to see. Yeah, Terrible unfortunately, photo. that got spoiled for me before I came in. Oh, so really? I knew I knew that was coming. Um, I've also not seen Daredevil. So I, I know, uh, I know of him. Have you seen Daredevil? No, oh, I haven't watched it. I... <laughs> it's so fucking good, man. It's excellent. I know it's amazing. I've heard so it's many excellent. great things about it. Yeah, but, uh, awesome. And my theater, I went. I went a couple weeks after opening day, so my theater was quiet. But I was sitting in front of like the spider, the real Spider Man <laughs> in the crowd. Yeah. So they were really funny to. I mean, it was really fun to watch to hear to listen to them because they were the one being like, "Oh my fucking god!" <laughs> like <laughs> right behind me. <laughs> so when that came on, they kind of they quietly blew, lost their mm-hmm. shit, which was super funny. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I lost my shit. I mean, I, yeah. when I first saw it, I was like, "Oh my god!" Like I actually made like a sound. I was like, yeah. "Oh shit!" Like, yeah. I was like, wow. And well, the it's was so awesome with the well, like coming up. Too. It's great. Well, the other thing that's cool about that sort of uh cameo, well, first of all, it's not like a stupid cameo, it's also like no, furthers the story. Absolute, right. But the fact that he's not in that movie also goes to show that's like, hey, he's he's in here and we're going to do more. Like that's exactly. what that that right. cameo said. It's like there's gonna be more happening with him. It's also like this is like think like are they gonna bring Jessica Jones, you know, or are they gonna bring, you know, right uh, 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 Luke Cage? Like because they acknowledge that the Netflix universe, you know, exists. So I would love to see I don't know how Jessica Jones would be, you know, incorporated. I love her too. I love that show as well. Yeah, I like that show a lot. I've seen you know, that. So one. I'm like, I don't know. I, it's it's exciting, you know, to, to know that these people are around, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. And uh, uh, another character that's in this movie, Doctor Strange, you know, and I think, like, I think we mentioned, like, when we talked about the trailer, it was like, you know, each one of these films had, like, another hero or, like, big character in the movie to like support Spider-Man so like Homecoming was Iron Man and, and um, Far From Home was Mysterio Jake Joe Hall was Mysterio and this film had uh, Stephen Strange which I thought that this film handled I thought Doctor Strange's like um, role in this movie was like perfect I thought he was in the movie the perfect amount I thought that he um, it, he, he did it, it still felt like a Spider-Man movie like that was the thing that was a little weird to me about the previous two um, was like it didn't feel like a it was like an Iron Man Spider-Man movie like it wasn't mm-hmm. like a, a just a Spider-Man movie but I think like Stephen Strange just being in this movie like really uh, elevated it you know it made it feel more like epic I feel like um, yeah 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 because of all these other characters and I love that character. I think I think Better Than Better Dots is great um, yeah. as that character. So, yeah, um, I feel it was a really great sort of a, a angle of him to let him be like as funny as Benedict Cumberbatch yeah. sort of yeah. could be, and let the character sort of expand right. in in those types of ways. Yeah, <laughs> please, Scooby, do this shit. <laughs> uh, but he that was uh dr strange was really cool to have i agree he was really cool to have in this and they also i like how they structured it where like the the problem comes from dr strange and, exactly. and it's and the, right. the problem is about spider-man being in dr the dr strange magic world right um and i i also really like the whole development of dr strange sort of being an ally at first and then turning into okay let's clean up this shit together and then spider-man fights him in a really cool way that's really satisfying and so he kind of becomes like spider-man's antagonist for the first sort of act of the movie before switching to the villains yeah right it's it's cool and like i i think that was something that we kind of thought was going to happen you know yeah kind of alludes to the trailer but um yeah i mean i think like that whole the way that got developed, I thought was great. Where you know, Doctor Strange, you know, because he's a nice guy, <laughs> he 
uh, also Wong in his, in his very short appearance. I love Wong. He's, he's awesome. I, I just want to see a Wong movie. Can that happen? Can we just yeah. make Wong? Long Did he look like... Wong. I feel like his eyebrows were gone in this movie. Was Am, is, am <laughs> I, I making that up? That. <laughs> I just I felt like his eyebrows were super light. Well, I don't know that. <laughs> Next time I watch it, I'll see if his eyebrows are gone. Yeah, they have to. I didn't. I just remembered that right now. It's like, where's his eyebrows? I don't. I wonder if I look that up. Like, where are Wong's eyebrows? If it will, <laughs> if it will, like, where are Wong's eyebrows? Where, where are they? <laughs> <laughs> eyebrows. Well, no. they're above his eyes, oh. on his brow. <laughs> Uh, um, I I really hope someone else has mentioned this. I hope no, they're just, I'm just crazy. Eyebrows, they're just they must just be thin. They must just be um, thin. But I thought I thought that his uh like he had like he he was the butt of one of my favorite jokes in the movie. It's like a subtle joke, but like when Wong is like, no, you can't like you can't do that. That that spell deals with you know magic that we don't we're not aware of we don't know and uh, strange is like do you remember the the party at comic-cons last year and he's like no it's like well <laughs> <laughs> like, like i love this this is the idea of wong's like went too crazy one night partied too hard and said yeah. something did something stupid and yeah. like had feeling strange forget just it's so funny and just makes me happy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I love that was so like it's not life or death, you know. It was like I, I love that it was just this like Wong well, was like, okay, let's all right, you can do it, whatever, fine. You know, yeah. It wasn't like you're gonna destroy the earth. And the Stranger Strange is like, no, fuck it. I, you know, it's just like, you know, it's not. um I don't know, it could have been so much stupider, you know, where it was just, I love how it was just like, okay, fine, like, let's, let's do it, you know? Yeah. Um, I've done it before, and, you know, Tom Holland, you know, Spider-Man having to, you know, fuck it up, he's like, I don't want, <laughs> can MK still go? Can Ned, Ned's got to still go? And Strings is like, he's like, God, fucking, God damn it. And, like, you know, just fucks up the whole spell and brings all the fucking villains in the movie. And yeah. um, I thought that um, also just like the whole MIT thing where, you know, Peter feels bad because because of him, MJ and then, you know, because they're associated with Spider-Man, weren't able to get into college, so he feels bad. And so he's trying to uh, go to visit the MIT and this is the person and, you know, give them a second chance. And that's the big scene. That's the big reveal, right? Where Doc Ock shows up on the fucking, you know, we saw it in the trailer. We saw a lot of that sequence in the trailer. That was like the big sequence that they kept pushing yeah. the yeah. material. And, you know, the first time I saw this movie, I was like, this is crazy. Like, it's, 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 when Albert Molina just shows up and he's like, <laughs> he's talking about, you destroyed my reactor and it's like what, like holy what? shit man and just like the whole you know that whole scene i thought was great that fight was really cool you know i kind of accepted you know it's pretty cgi looking you know but yeah you know, it's not it's not the practical arms and you know, it's not too. the awesome practical arm you know effects of starman 2 um like in starman 2 there's that when he gets out of the hospital and like the car comes and the arms like literally like rip the car like flip the car up and down and that looks so real because it is real <laughs> you know you know get get that in this movie it is a lot of cgi but i think the choreography is really fun it was very exciting yeah um, i did I, I did like the, the i thought the action in the spider-man movie i really I liked it best. on for for like yeah. spider-man and for a lot of marvel movies i really thought the action yeah. flowed and felt it felt really weightier totally. than a lot of yeah. other ones have totally. felt absolutely that, that actually i think was another thing that really struck me is like uh, you're so right. how late how linear the action felt because you know those rainy films even spider-man 3 
how late to them. You know, the action have he is so good at action sequences. So mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. if you are in darkness and even then too, like he's incredible at action. Like that's probably the best thing about him <laughs> is the way that he suits action scenes so this way. Um, and it was cool that, you know, we saw a little bit of that in this, you know, where it was a little more weighty. Um, but, uh, yeah, I also loved how that whole uh, Grinch fight ended with the nanotechnology and uh, Peter, like, uh, control, had, like, controlling his arms, you know, and uh, kind of taking Otto out of the picture, you know, with the nanotechnology. Yeah. I thought that that was a pretty funny dynamic where he's still uh, he's still Doc Ock, but he can't control his arms. So yeah. he's so he's still like being manipulated, but he, he can't do anything about it. And like I, I, I thought that that was an interesting way to take it, you know. Yeah. I um, I also I also like that because it was a really another very marvel way of dealing with the problem because it's uh -huh. just like oh that's so marvel but i would not really think of doing that in a typical so sort marvel. of comic book comic book sense but totally. it's mar mcu that was it was very in line and very unexpected in a yeah. in a good kind of subtle but really good way totally and like you know then we're introduced to how you know um they cap the they're capturing all the villains and you know the second centaurum in the in Doctor Strange's basement where uh, he brings them back and he says, "You gotta catch all these fucking guys. <laughs> they're everywhere. You know, they, they we open the rift and now they're here and you know we you gotta go catch them." You know, that was one of the things that I I I think that they I think that for what they wanted to put in the movie was fine, but I they they handled it fine. But I think that was sort of a fun thing that I could wish for more of is like the hunt and collection of all the villains. Uh -huh. It's like, they could have made a whole movie off of that. That's such a I fun know, right? idea. Yeah, that's definitely um, something that like, I would have liked to see. Like, um, on one hand, I would have liked to see that, but on the other hand, I think that they could have, like, I know they wanted to bring all of the villains in this movie, but I think they probably could have left out a couple. Like, I think the lizard does almost nothing in this movie like he yeah. doesn't really it's not so bad like he does have he is an important part like him in the truck you know like he's the reason that you know um jj jameson like kind of finds him we talk about how jj jameson was utilizing this film but i thought it was pretty cool actually um but so he's not totally useless and sandman also like he helps Peter fight Electro. Um, but I think those two definitely got the sword under the stick, you know, the Lizard and, and Sandman. I couldn't, like, there's a movie, there's a, a version of this movie where those two aren't in it and don't, like, you know, they don't yeah. need to be in the movie. But I get they wanted to bring everybody. I didn't hate it, but, yeah, I would have liked a, a whole scene where they're, where he's hunting down Doc Ock, you know? instead of kind of falling into his lap you know um, yeah yeah uh, but we did get that with electro which i thought was a really cool scene um where he he brings on mj and then which we haven't even mentioned like the romance between uh mj and uh so much better like it was yeah so much better in this movie they had really strong chemistry i really liked it they're dating in real life so that probably helps. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think that they really sold me because I like Zendaya a lot because she's a great actress. And, you know, the other two, she's good in Far From Home. She's got more to do in that film. Um, but here, she really, like, sold me as this character. Like, seeing her develop into uh, opening, you know, opening up more coming out of her cell more in this movie uh i i grew to really like this version of mj i was on the fence you know yeah with the first two but this one like kind of sold me on it you, you know that's actually was really good that that also brings up a really interesting point or thought that i just had because one of the things with her was one of my conflicts was this resistance to like accepting 
her as MJ and mm -hmm. you really even Tom Holland as Spider-Man because it was so um, different than yeah. what I, I would normally expected. And honestly, bringing in that there are these other realities where it's just like, no, these other realities do exist. And this is just a different one living alongside that one mm -hmm. made it really uh, so much easier to just like, I don't know, it just kind of click something with me about really seeing it's like, oh, oh, this isn't like a rewrite, like Amazing Spider-Man kind of was in that context. Yeah. It's yeah. like a, well, it's, it's a, like, in addition to. Film too, in a weird way, right? like, yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's like, I thought, I mean, like, this is a really smart movie. It's a super smart movie. Like, there are ways, like, it, there are ways that you can easily have fucked this up and easily could have made it not work like spider-man 3 like, and amazing spider-man 2 i wrote this movie <laughs> it would be a train wreck it would be horrible <laughs> you know so and but they were so careful of like how they handled the the universes in the spell you know um and uh yeah you're right it is it's that that does add a lot to it, it makes you like accept this version even more you know yeah and that's um, all, you, and another I also thought they had great chemistry and I yeah just in general they were like really cute and i bought their relationship you know like at the end i was like feel i was like feeling it you know when yeah. he has to say goodbye to her that that was painful you know yeah that's so I, <laughs> I was like fuck man you know because they gently finally see them as MJ and Peter and then now it's taken away, you know? And, yeah. Um I think that that was bold, first of all, but it sucks, you know, because it was it was uh it was starting to get really good. You know, I yeah. don't know what they're gonna do in the future, but um yeah. 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 I, I full agree. I think I wanna go back and and well I just want to mention also uh another thing I really liked about this film or really my favorite thing about this film, which is exemplified in that scene when Peter has all of the old villains in mm -hmm. the strange dungeon mm -hmm. yeah. is just the banter and the script writing and the dialogue yeah. is so snappy and so right. funny, yeah. but it's not, it's not that kind of undermining the story kind of humor. Right. It's very in line with like that character would totally say that Absolutely. in that situation because yeah. it's, it's really funny just to see all these characters, these villains who just sort of accept the fact that they're contained by a magical power that they have no way of even comprehending yeah. how to get out of that. They just yeah. start like chatting and like, then yeah. like shooting the shit. Well, yeah. not really shooting the shit. They're really kind of antagonizing Peter and just yeah. being, being a bunch of butts. And it's right. really, it's really enjoyable. It's so fun. Yeah, it was super fun. Um, something that we haven't even talked about yet. To me, the MVP, one of the MVPs of the is Willem fucking Defoe. Yeah. The Green Goblin. And that was the most, I think, the most curious and excited to see going into this movie with a villain's perspective because it's Willem Defoe. You know, the Green Goblin is such an iconic villain from that first Spider Man movie. Like, he's a meme, he's amazing. Yeah. You know, it's and he fucking killed it on this movie. He went so hard. He went almost like I was like, this is why Will the Foe is fucking awesome. Cause he easily could have came in and phoned it in. Actually all these people, all these people, Alfred Molina, James Fox, they all gave it their all. Like they easily and Toby Wire and and Garfield, they could have came in and phoned it in, you know? But Will the phone to not phone it in. He's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and like I just that first moment too when um Peter or when Norman goes to um feast. I think it's is it called feast in this movie? Yes, yes. Okay. Um the at the whole shelter and uh he's Norman, you know, he has this look of like total fear and i completely forgot that there i don't know why i forgot this but there are two sides to him you know there's the northern side and there's the goblin side that comes out you know i i for some reason when i first saw this i forgot that oh yeah like they they switch it's not 
it's not always, you know, the dog winning. It's not always Norman, you know? And yeah. I thought that that was really well handled. And Will Defoe super sold it in that, in that scene because you really do feel like he's an innocent old man in that, in that first part of the movie. And that was important because, like, when the transformation happens and probably the pinnacle, the cli- the the pin- the climax of the movie when it's revealed that he is the guy that fucks everything up, you know, uh, it's super important because it, it hits that much harder, you know. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I thought Will the Fed just absolutely killed it, and I was so happy that. The goblin is the villain of this movie. Like he's yeah, kind of he's the, the main antagonist. Villain. And that was, you know, fucking so great because it's well the first green goblin and we get to see him again. And not just see him again, but like see him again like and doing shit. Like yeah, not, like and did you also catch I thought this was so cool, his costume. I thought that that did you catch that? Did, are you like not the fact that it was the same as Spider Man? No, 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 no. no but... when, when he, so when he goes to feast, he has a purple sweatshirt on and a green blazer. And then when he turns into the goblin at the end, he has the, it, it's his armor under it and it gets all ripped. And it's like the, the it's the suit from the comics. So it has like mm. this, the ripped oh, purple yeah. sweatshirt with the hood on. It's pretty cool, man. Oh, that's like, awesome! It's, it's a yeah. cool, like uh, I really, I, I, I didn't kind of play like that. I, I didn't make the connection of what it was quite referencing, but I noticed it's like okay, they're doing something. I really love the look that's of, like, of the like the later stage of the goblin. Yeah, um, that's the really cool. Suit, and I, I did like it updated because look, the the Randy suit, while I love, it does look like like a Power Rangers like outfit. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that it was important that they did update it, you know, make it different. First of all, to stand out amongst the other one. Um, right. All the all the characters had different costumes in the suit and looked different. Yeah, thank um, God Electro looked different. I love yeah, I love that, that they was changed him. That, like like I love how they just that was just like, yeah, when I came to this universe, I just was different. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, I accept that. Like, whatever. Yeah. Like, it's funny because it's like, it's like, I kind of, I'm not like mad about a, not wanting to know why. He's like a different person. Yeah. Like he yeah. Acts completely different. Yeah. And I think that they, they're able to do that to a degree because he was so awful and amazing yeah. Spider Man, too. It's just like, I, I, anything, do something yeah. completely different. I really yeah. don't care. I'm cool. I'm glad it's the same person. I'll right. take it. Just make it better. And they did. And it's yeah. great. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I thought that Jay Fox was also really cool. So he had some really cool <laughs> one liners. So I think the end of the film when he's like, I think there's a black Spider Man out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought that was great. That was really um, fun. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think also the the big plot point too is that that we haven't mentioned yet is like how Peter wants to cure all these villains. Right. And I thought to me, I thought that that was really sweet. Uh, that was super in character for Peter uh, because you know he's told that when all these characters go back to their universes, they're just gonna get killed. They're gonna die. And uh, Peter, being a good-hearted person, tries to do everything in his power to, to let that not happen. And so he, which is also cool, like, as much as I love the Rainy films, we don't really see Peter in those Rainy films, like, be a genius, you know? Like, be a, be a, like a, you know, he doesn't build his webs or anything like that. We don't really see him be the, the brainy act that Peter Parker is. So it was really cool to see, um, you know, Peter, like, with the Stark technology creating, you know, the chip for Doc Ock to, you know, to cure him and the, and the serum for Lizard and stuff like that. I thought that that was really cool, you know, and, and weirdly something that we don't really see in a lot of Spider-Man movies, which is kind of odd, right? Because we kind of get that in the Andrew Garfield films with him making his web shooters, but, like, it's cool that this Peter is like a legit genius, you know, and you yeah. see that. And there's that, you know, amazing callback with all three of them are in the lab together, like, yeah. you know, 
awesome, you know? Yeah. Uh, so the sequence of events is that that scene where he's doing that and trying to cure all of them while they're in Happy's apartment, which is very funny. Yeah. Uh, this movie uh, is super funny. It's like, really funny. Yeah. So that 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 happens where they they get stuck in there. Then he fights Strange, which that mirror dimension fight was really cool. Who still had Doxy? Who's Doxy Doctor Strange? No, I haven't. Dude, I should watch it. Doxy, bro. The whole movie's in the mirror dimension. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 all, that's how they fight. The yeah, that, shit. yeah, that. So that that and that that fight was really cool. Sam Raimi to direct the fuck to direct scenes in the mirror dimension. That's the cool. That was such a funny thing that that since they had at the end of this movie that the oh, reveal yeah, the trailer, was the, the trailer. Yeah, it was just like that was a little weird looks, looks and great. kind of the trailer looks awesome. But, but it's just like it, the movie yeah. was so extreme and had so yeah. much shit in it. It was kind of underwhelming. It was sort yeah. of a funny a reaction to have. Um yeah. but but yeah, yeah, yeah. So then and yeah, after that scene is when we really have that pivot. Oh, so we and then we have the goblin fight. I think the goblin fight is my favorite yeah, fight well, in the well, movie. Well, you know, he turns into the goblin. Yeah, um, and then yeah, that whole scene is uh, to me. It's the best. I think it's other than uh, the obvious <laughs> the, the end of this movie. Uh, but that to me is like the best moment in in the yeah. in the Spider-Man trilogy is that that fight is so brutal. I and really culminates in something so dark. And right, May's bad. death. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, um, and that was uh, you know, Marvel films. Looks like I love them. They don't go dark. You know, they don't really do. I mean, the Avengers films are like the last thing that we kind of see something like kind of actually kind of dark happen. With you know the you know everybody dying, <laughs> half of the world dying, um, but this felt like, I mean, it it was I don't know why I wasn't expecting it either though I was not expecting them to kill Aunt May you know and in the way that they did and so that scene just was so like it was heartbreaking it was because Peter was so. Because in that moment, you literally see Peter, like, have to face real sick. Because up until this point, he did it. And you can tell that, like, in that, as he's dying, he's, like, so stunned that something like this could even happen, you know? Because up until this point, he's kind of been able to um, go through life without you know, having to deal with something super dark like this, you know? And that's what Spider-Man, that's, this is his, this is his Uncle Ben, you know? This is his Uncle Ben moment. Is right, Spider-Man. right, right. And that was a, that's a, it was a really good transformation moment for him to sort of go into that, into that dark pit. Um, um What did you think of the, because I thought it was fucking, I thought it was really cool, that the, the, with great power comes great responsibility line. I thought um, that, that was really cool. But, I thought it was, I thought it was, it didn't really hit me that hard, but I thought it was cool. It was sort of like superficially cool, if you know what I mean. It's like, oh, that was yeah. work. That was clever, but I wasn't like, yeah. whoa. Right, right. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah. But I thought that's, I mean, that's what I mean. It's yeah. The way that it was like, um, it, like, I thought that was just a great moment to do that. And because, like, it, it also, it kind of did blow my mind because I didn't even think, I was like, oh, sick. They haven't even, he hasn't even, like, learned that you know so it's just like like i was saying earlier that i just accepted that this was going to be a different spider-man you know and it being that i I think it was just more impactful in the way of like oh shit like they they said it you know that that's going to be something and the callback with cody and andrew was just was great you know yeah yeah um like just connecting to the fact that they all are told that you know what 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 is like consistent with all Spider-Man is that with great power comes great responsibility. Is it corny? Yeah, but it's Spider-Man, man. It's cool, yeah. uh, and it's it's soap opera and cool, but it's like I love that. That's just a sweet, good-hearted idea, you know, that all of these Spider-Man are connected 
through that through that tragedy you know? right right which 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 you saying that mean was also why it was such a good decision to wait to bring in the other spider-mans until after that moment so when peter's at his darkest right, at moment, moment like that right. then we then we switch and we have that yeah. uh, i love that scene where um first of all i, I just want to like this is i think this has been a phenomenon on the the the, the hype around andrew garfield the yeah, spider-man yeah, again yeah, right, is right. really well deserved because he is so fun as Spider-Man in that movie. Oh, and that yeah. first yeah. scene where he's talking to MJ mm-hmm. and Ned yeah, is yeah. really so funny and so charming Dude, and so Spider-Man. It's the I best. I saw this movie for the first time, I mean, you could imagine. I mean, when Ned opens that portal, I mean, that scene, when I was watching this, like, this, is one of the, this is already one of the most iconic scenes. <laughs> like, like a blockbuster film history that I'm watching right now because this is crazy. But dude, it was like a rock concert when yeah. Andrew Garfield jumps out of that thing, and you know half the audience was I knew because of the suit, but half the audience was like, was like, oh, oh shit! And when he rips off that his mask, everybody's oh, he's like yeah. fucking yeah. like erupted. It was crazy. Yeah, it was like. We were seeing fucking like Van Halen in 1982. Like it was yeah. fucking wild. It was funny because um, I mean, Toby did a great job too. But really, I think Andrew I mean, kind of stole it for me. That was like, oh my god. But, yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, no, Andrew Garfield. He's an amazing actor. He's gonna get nominated for an Oscar this year. I mean, he's he's a fucking phenomenal. It must have been so cool for him because he probably did the Spider Mans and saw the receptions and saw the movies and he was just like, "Well, there's a dream yeah. that I just I'm I'm happy to be a part of it." He's mentioned said stuff like that too. It's like I'm really happy to be a Spider Man yeah. and be a part of it. But that part of him probably was just like, "Man, you know that kind of sucks." Really, he never really got to. He never got like the chance to really be Spider Man to, to the, end it way. or to really yeah. have his full because. As much as I don't like the relationship with Spider-Man 2, there are, like, ideas in that that I think are genuinely fucking great. Um, like, Glenn dying, you know, that whole... Like, the fact that that, that movie ends with him, like, with Glenn dead, and, like, it's sad. Like, that sucks. So, you know, and he never got to, you know, do another film. Or, and what was cool is that in this movie... He, he has a redemption, you're right. Like, the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, like, is kind of more developed in this movie, and it's just, like, cool to see that, you know, because as much as I don't like those two movies, I like, for the most part, Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. Not, yeah. that's what's Peter Parker in those movies, but as Spider-Man, I thought he was fucking great. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this well, movie, it was awesome, it was, well, both both worlds, you know? the genius again about this movie is was putting it on the fact about being comfortable with doing Spider-Man differently and the different versions mm-hmm. of Spider-Man. But exactly. the biggest problem with Amazing Spider-Man, in my opinion, is that they were trying to tweak it, but still basically do Sam Raimi's archetype, you know, yeah. switching between Spider-Man and then like the thing when really it would have been much cooler if they just accepted that Andrew Garfield was an older Spider-Man, like a uh-huh. teen, a little bit like out of high school. Because he would be he's really like the little was, brother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He was like the middle brother, and right. and so them kind of accepting that that's what suited his personality and that was uh-huh. like his role. It was just so satisfying to see that see that so, done in, I mean, in the way that, that scene, it could be done. First introduced is it's it's insane. I, it's like I don't know, man. That that whole scene was just when Toby shows up. I mean, I I it, I almost it was. So emotional to me because it was just, yeah, <laughs> just seeing because Toby is my favorite Spider-Man, and just seeing him out slip into that role again, you know, slip into Peter again, that innocent, you know, kind of, you know, shy Peter, you know, and him just be like walking in, just be like, hey guys, <laughs> like, well, what's yeah. going on? Yeah, and like he was just so, um, you know, he, he, he just fell into the role again, you know, it was like he never really left, you know, and, yeah. uh, like that whole scene too, when they first see each other and they're like, what is that? they like, <laughs> you know, wed each other and that, yeah, that, that was whole so fun. Scene so I fun. Was great. Although 
one of my biggest criticisms of the movie in general is Ned. I love Ned in the movie. I think he's great. But the fact that he just was like magic all of a sudden is pretty lame. I think that that's not very good storytelling in the midst of a, a, like a really, really well written movie. That was pretty dumb. Um, that was like because that was not developed at all. His previous two movies, he literally was just like, my grandma told me that I'm magic, and I and I guess I'm magic. And it's like, okay, I, I mean, yeah. I know we needed a and the thing, the, another, the super dumb thing is like him being magic, whatever. That's cool, I guess. But him being able to uh, use the sling ring as uh, proficiently and easily as he did is super dumb. Uh, if you see the first Doctor Strange, because it takes Doctor Strange, the Sorcerer Supreme, a while to to learn how to do that. Like that's a a moment in the movie is that it takes him a while to learn that. So this man just being able to like Peter and like is, is kind of silly. Uh, yeah. And rewatching the movie, it does diminish the, the, the magic of that scene a little bit just because it's so just convenient the way that like there's probably a better way that they could have wrote had to get them together um yeah but you know it's it's whatever and like i i, I think i'm gonna if they do nothing with them and the magic element that's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be weird but yeah um, well well i was curious because we'll do anything with it, rather think about it. But. Because I was as I was <laughs> looking, kind of reviewing this movie, I realized that Ned's character in the comics is potentially the same Ned that became the hobgoblin. So and also oh the, my God. The, that was one of the funniest moments in the fucking movie, dude. When like yeah. the oh my god, when the, like <laughs> Toby was like, you know, I had a best friend, you know, he died he, he tried to kill me and then had that great moment. He's like, Hey, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna try to kill you, you know. I love that moment. But yeah, you're yeah. right. He does become and they they try to make a cool joke, you know, this movie pertaining yeah. to that. Which, if Ned doesn't remember Spider-Man in the future movies, yeah. then maybe he will develop some kind of complex. Ooh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so that, cool. that might that might actually happen and might yeah, lead to something. Cool. Uh, yeah, but I, I still agree that it's stupid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I have, I do I have some criticisms about it that I want to kind of run past you, by you yeah. about the movie, um, and maybe we can also talk about um, well. Oh, the big the big thing I wanted as I was thinking about it and sort of chewing on the movie is that um I was realizing which this kind of touches on what you were talking about like of the useless villains and I was realizing that really a lot of the villains didn't really have that strong of motivation at all um yeah I mean that's like I think to me I think is the biggest issue of this film because watching it again I still think that this is a pretty great movie but I think it would have been better if, like, it's it's this hard to talk about because Electro, like his motivations were watching it again were so, very confusing um, because he comes into the world and he's like he almost accepts that like you know he's in this world and he. Because I don't even remember why he wants to kill Spider-Man in the first place. <laughs> like, I think it's just because, like, I don't really remember, honestly, what his motivation of the Age of Spider-Man 2 was. Um, yeah, I don't remember he either. To kill Spider -Man. Um, but in this movie, it was kind of strange that he would just, like, at the end battle, just, like, show up and just, like, want to kill them. It's like, why? Like, he... Like he tried to help you, like he, you just want to use your power. Is the electricity like going to your head? Is this what's happening? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. like I think All the, the electro character is pretty inconsistent. I mean, I really, I think the only character, only villain who really had any genuine motivation was Green Goblin, which was based right. on the fact of him just enjoying torturing Peter. Mm -hmm. 
and right. just and right. and hating Spider Man. Right. Right. That was like the only real. Well, strong it was crazy. Thing. Well, the Goblin was you know absolutely crazy. Yeah. yeah, and so that was that really really worked, and you felt that. But yeah. like you're right, like Electro, it's like you. I don't know why you really wanted yeah. to. Why you went with him <laughs> yeah. about being cured because you really like your powers, and then yeah. you left, and then you came back to kill Spider Man. Okay, it's like Lizard. Why are you here? You're not really yeah. even a character. Right. Sandman. Yeah. Why are you here? You're right. not really a character. Yeah. Electro. I already said Electro. Yeah. And Doc Ock kind of had an arc, but like he I, had I the like big. With Doc Ock, because like he at the beginning he is like walking in his reactor back, and then when he's you know cured. I like the the idea of him being, you know, uh, helping him at the end. I thought that yeah. was really cool. But that was also, I've, it was a funny thing. It's just like, where did he go for that whole yeah. time? He was yeah, just like, you what, where was Doc Ock? You say that about a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. you, say that, that, you would say that about the entire third act of Avengers Endgame. Uh-huh. Like, so, <laughs> like, it's like, Captain Marvel just decided to, show up in the last <laughs> last moment and yeah just, you know what i mean like yeah I mean, yeah it, that, that was definitely something that was a little like convenient you know there's there's a yeah. couple conveniences that happen in, in these big budget movies that definitely bug me a little bit then and you know doc ock and electro being yeah. a confusing character as much as i liked him in this movie thought he was a lot of fun his you're right his character was super confusing like seeing it again i still was like i don't get this guy i don't yeah like i understand that he likes the power that he has in this new universe but like go like why do you have to i don't know it was very confusing i didn't really yeah because i think i think it was it was also weird because spider-man's motivation they wrote spider-man's motivation pretty clearly you understood that was very understandable but then there was also like that dynamic about the box being desirable for some reason and that whole was that was kind of like messy uh that whole idea of like um i guess that's the box that would send them back and potentially kill them well Right. But yeah. then but then they like they like seem to want it, but not really want it or not really work that hard or not be like that was all yeah. that was like that, that whole their whole wants and like plan right. around right. that was just really murky. And it's like right. I, I get it of what you're trying to do, but it's not clear. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, that's true because how the last fight happens is like doesn't like um yeah, you're right. Like the motivation of just like why they're fighting at the end is a little unclear, you know. They just show up essentially. They show up and they're like, Well, we fight Spider Man, so this is what let's go. Do. <laughs> and, like, that's fine, I guess, but um, I think it would have been a little strong. And it is hard, you know, we have like all these different villains. It's like it's like yeah, I guess they, they just wanted the box, they wanted to destroy the box. This goblin, you know. Uh, does destroy the box, you know, he throws yeah. the, the uh, grenade in it. And so, but why did they want the box? I guess was it they wanted to not go home, you know? Um, obviously, yeah, I, um, I guess, I guess, like the, the idea because it, I know it's, Electro it's... did not want to go home, right? Um, Electro, Electro Doc didn't Oc, want to go I home. Like Doc Oc, I mean, he was he was a good guy, so he wasn't really he was just yeah. helping them out. Sandman but, just wanted to go home, so I didn't even really understand he, why he, he was to, fighting Spider Man. Like, why? Wanted, yeah, Sandman, I feel like, wanted to go home to his daughter. Yeah. He, he Marco. But, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the, the lizard is, in my opinion, the dumbest villain in any of the Spider Man movies ever. Like, he, his <laughs> plan is completely moronic in that fucking movie. And they actually make a hilarious joke in this film about how fucking dumb the lizard is where they're like so what if you want to do you want to turn everybody into lizards you know <laughs> like, that was his fucking plan of that movie like you want to turn the the whole city into lizards yeah this is pretty funny like, it's so stupid um so i love that they actually make fun of that in i like that too yeah um, satisfying it is really dumb and, <laughs> <laughs> like it's super dumb 
Uh, and so, but yeah, you're right. I think that the, the, there are motivations that are unclear, especially towards the end. But the thing is, like, you're, you're so invested in the three Spider-Men and yeah. their dynamic that you kind of, it's kind of goes in the background a little bit. Yeah. Um, it, but, it, 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 did, it did bother me, but you're right. Like, well, it, it made it hard for me to connect with some of, like, the emotional punches mm-hmm. between the characters, yeah. like, literal emotional punches. But a lot of the focus was about the personal development of Tom mm-hmm. Holland's speech right. Spider-Man. And fortunately, the that arc, the goblin, that worked really, really well. Right. And fortunately, they did have the goblin. So he was sort of like the real right. antagonist and all the yeah. other ones just sort of turned into color. Right. So it worked, but it, it was like, oh, well, that, that kind of sucks. I wish they gave those guys more character. But I'm I'm happy to at least see Goblin have that like totally. huge return in a like, really big way. He's like laughing and shit when he's when he's Peter just pummeling so he's just laughing. He's like, You killed her. Yeah. And you're and um, I mean and, and also like like doubling down on how just strong that the three Spider Man dynamic is. Yeah, it's I mean, so I think we cool. Talk about that last scene, that last thing, like, you know, them together, dude. It just was amazing. Like their chemistry with one another was amazing. It was so wholesome. It was just, it was beautiful. It was yeah. just it was like it was handled so well. Dude, there were so many moments in that last, you know, suit like that last suit on for it. It just warms my heart just to think about it. And there's that great moment where they're all waiting, you know, for, you know, the the girls to arrive, and they're all just suit the shit, and yeah. like they're like, so like you just create webs in your <laughs> body, and he's like, well, I don't do it. I do, it's like you know, you breathe. It's like breathing. Like I don't. I just do it. I I don't think <laughs> like the whole fucking thing was great. They're like so. Like what are the? I did. Ones? I did have web block. I did have web block. Yeah, yeah. Ones. I love that. <laughs> love that. And they were like, yeah, yeah, that was great. Ever have a web block? <laughs> yeah, that was so funny. I really uh, Toby and uh Andrew Garfield. Was so funny. Man. They, they they really just had they had like this amazing such a fun synergy to them. It's just like it was like them realizing like this camaraderie about both being Spider-Man in the past and just being excited yeah. to be Spider-Man and again. I think our favorite moment between the two was so good. Like they, when they were like, uh, they were like, um, so like, what did we fought? Oh, I fought like an alien and had a black dude <laughs> once. And, oh yeah, I went to space, you know, but and then Andrew Garfield was like, well, I'm late compared to you guys. I, I fought <laughs> a Russian guy in a, a rhino suit. And then Andrew Garfield like, Hey, can you can you stop with that? You know, you're amazing. <laughs> like that that moment was so awesome. It's so funny, but it was so sweet. It was like yeah. the older brother being like, "Hey, man, like you're pick awesome. yourself up. Don't don't, yeah. don't push yourself down like that." And like it was just so beautiful. And like when they're all fighting, and they're all like, "I don't know how to fight as a team." It's like I don't. I don't want to brag, but I was in the Avengers and Toby was like, that's awesome. What is that? <laughs> and I was like, uh, are you the pig? Uh, <laughs> and like, uh, and, and just like that whole scene of like Andrew Garfield just being like, I love you guys. <laughs> it was just so like great because they really were like brothers. You know, they, yeah. it's almost like they directed and wrote the the scene it felt very interesting. I I would assume that there was a lot of improvising going on. Yeah, it really movie. seemed like yeah, it did seem it like that. It was just too good. Like it was like it was just too like the chemistry was just so good that I was like, there's no way that like I I, I maybe it was written, but um it was just it felt so natural, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. When like you know, it's almost like that they went in thinking like you know. Tom Holland's the younger brother, Toby's the older brother, and you know they 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 approached it like that, and that that's beautiful. And that scene, with, you know, when they're you know comforting Tom Holland, Peter Parker is it's so great. It's like, <laughs> hey, I lost somebody. You know, this is just part of being who we are. You know, this is what yeah. we do, and 
it, it gets to the core of Spider-Man. That was the thing that was like so amazing is that the film understood the character of Spider-Man so well. And they wrote this, it reminded me a lot of honestly like Spider-Verse and how, how well that movie understood the more the, the the core of who Peter Parker is. And yeah. Like, this film just really understood it. And that those are like the best Spider Man movies to me. Or right. like this Spider Man two and the Spider Verse where they really get to the heart of who Peter Parker is. You know, that also you just bringing up Spider Verse made me realize how probably impactful that film was on making this film be as good totally. as it is. And I was impressed by like that this film kind of separated itself a little bit from it um yeah. it does feel a little different than fireworks just because um the, the meta aspect to it but yeah, yeah. I, I don't i don't i don't think i don't think that it, it i agree i think it's a very unique take on multiple spider-mans yeah. and the ensemble villain cast but uh i think what it more so of what i think it took from spider-man was them to think about how to write spy three spider-mans distinctly and make mm -hmm. them all still be spider-man because exactly, that's right, what right. spider-verse did so well it's uh -huh. like they were all spider-man right. very clearly and they felt like spider-man right. but they were all different right. and and and, and they sort of like they had an easier hit here because they're already kind of developed characters right i mean they just, just had the right a good situation for them to be in you know yeah yeah and it and it worked amazingly yeah. it really did <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's just there's so many moments in the movie. Like, I mean, Tony Aguirre, like, you know, I thought, you know, it warmed my heart to no end when they're like talking about, you know, do you have somebody? Do you have an MJ? It's like, yeah, I got an MJ back home, you know. It was yeah. hard. Yeah. Know, but we made it work. And that was just, you know, knowing that <laughs> Tony Aguirre, Spider Man, and MJ, Christian Dunn's MJ are together and thriving. Is just makes me happy. Um, yeah. And it's also, I, I know a lot of people are talking about this, but the, the development where Andrew Garfield's Spider Man had apparently gone rogue because he talks about how he, he got rageful and how he, um, after Gwen's death, like, I don't know, what alludes to he maybe, like, you know, went kind of AWOL and kind of went it. And I know some people are talking about, like, where's that movie? Let me see that movie. Whoa. Um, but, Bro, uh, that gave me, that just gave me the thought. Like, what if they continue with Tom Holland in, like, the film mm -hmm. universe and they give Andrew Garfield a Spider-Man show? Bro. That would be, that's a brilliant idea. I don't know what they would put the show on, but I think. Then they just put it on great. Disney Plus. They put it on Disney Plus. Well, that's the confusion part is they don't, uh, they don't technically, because this is a so oh, horrible. Oh, right weird thing it's it's yeah <laughs> that's yeah. A, that's a complicated thing about yeah you know, that is so complicated stuff. um and that's why this movie's fucking mind-blowing that it came out because it's it's three different incarnations and started with different rights and, and arrows and yeah my god that legal contract was probably a nightmare you could only get that with marvel money I don't know, disney though. big 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 mouse money but, to pay but, for that. but i will tell you though is because this movie made so much money and because everybody loved Toby and Andrew in this movie, you bet your fucking ass over there at Sony. They're trying to figure out a way that they can turn them back. Um, I don't think that because we live in this stupid... <laughs> it, in my opinion, I, I, I don't really... I don't want them to ruin a good thing. I would rather them just not like just make this movie and go along with the Tom Holland universe and maybe if you want to do maybe the the Andrew Garfield you know put him in, in the Venom universe or the Morbius universe and try to make that work but like I, I don't want it to overcomplicate things like you know and, I agree like, yeah I agree but we live in this world where if it makes money and people like it I think people I think the studio is definitely trying to find a way where they can bring back their capitalize. Their yeah. And I don't know the, the the actual cool way and logical way that they could do it. Um, 
And I don't know. I mean, would I be happy if Tony Wire showed up as Spider Man again? Maybe. You know, I thought that this was such a great closure for him, honestly, yeah. and like a great closure for Andrew Garfield Spider Man too. That like, um, I don't know if I necessarily want to see more um, of like of them. You know, um, but I just thought it was like, don't ruin a good thing. You guys did it so fucking well. The first time, like the Matrix, you know, <laughs> the Matrix is they shouldn't have made sequels to the Matrix. The Matrix is like a perfect little sci fi movie, and it shouldn't have been touched. The ending of the Matrix is fucking perfect. Him shooting up in the sky, going into the Matrix. You know, that's it. You know, yeah. no more. that's it. But the other <laughs> the movie's gonna do it. Um, and that's what I kind of <laughs> want to happen, you know, because if they are like, all right, now we're gonna make Spider Verse movies, like. You know, we're gonna like, like Peter is gonna figure out a way to open the multiverse again and bring these guys back. And now it's the adventures of like the, the three Spider Man, you know? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, you know? I don't know. But yeah. you know, you bet your ass, they're definitely gonna try to figure out a way to well, do it. Sure. Well, the, I mean, the way that they ended this movie, I mean, after Spider-Man, the, the Tom Holland resolution, the way they right. ended it with Venom also made the potential right. of the future very intriguing, which right, right. I'm so glad that they did Venom like this <laughs> so because, good. man, he is such a shit character so through bad. and through. Uh. And the fact that they like conveniently, well, very <laughs> smart, like wrote right. him out of that universe, but right. still wrote in Venom was right. such a cool origin symbiote. story. Yeah for the right. potential symbiote in the Tom Holland universe and right. a very exciting potential about Marvel cool. being able to write their own. I, I mean, I just really hope that they write a Venom and Spider-Man movie now. I want well, them to write Venom. They are, you know, people, uh, they want to pick out post credit scene if they don't have an idea, you know? Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's cool. That's really cool, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, like, uh, I'm guessing that but this movie is so interesting to talk about too because like we mentioned like everybody forgets who peter parker is at the end of this film boldly you know peter makes the decision of you know another you know sacrifice that he has to to do in order to save the, the world is that he has to give up the, his identity or he has to you know let no one know that he's fired on yeah and um and losing his he's super lonely and i really i don't know what they're gonna do i mean this is the first time in like a world movie i think in a while where since like ending or, or a good anymore where it's ended i'm like okay so what are they where doing? is this going yeah because i love what's happening here that fireman is on his own and that he's uh truly spider-man he's, he's not associated with any of the world characters i think that's brilliant but is he still in the mcu how are you gonna are you gonna in, reintroduce him to the to the world characters like what right. are you gonna do like right um is this is the contract between marvel and sony ending and this is why we did this and where Sony's going to be back and making Spider-Man movies? I don't know. Um, all I know is that this trilogy is awesome. I mean, if it ended with this trilogy, I'll be happy as shit. I'll be like, oh, what a great Spider-Man trilogy, man. Bring on the, bring on the new Spider-Man. Or bring on the new incarnation of it. Um, but I would love to see at least one more movie with Tom Holland as truly Spider-Man. You know, where he's on his own, he has no one, you know, and that, that, because that to me is a completely different character. That's almost like, you know, he's, he's playing a, a different version of the character now because he's not, he has no mentor, he has no one to uh, rely on. And that's yeah. fucking cool. So I guess yeah, it will be a Venom story. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, it could be it could be so many things. They can really they've really put themselves in a position where they could go basically anywhere, which is very cool. Yeah, very excited for the future. 
Oh. I have I I have one more question to maybe oh, wrap this up, uh, which this is the uh, James Jonah Jameson thing. Oh yeah. Um, uh, talk about that. I so I'm first of all I was really I'm just confused about like the logic of it a little bit because yeah. like it's so great to see him come back, but right. also it's like he's in the Spider Man well, Spider Raimi so universe. By, by the thing that I actually like about it was it what well, it definitely isn't the same. JJ it's it's definitely different. Uh he's actually not funny in this movie. Um he's actually uh he took um he's basically Alex Jones uh in in this version. He's like a controversial news podcaster in this movie. And I think that they he's not this like cigar chewing uh like cartoon that he is in the um Rainy films. So for me, um it is weird when you start like getting into the logic of that. But to me, the character felt so much different that it, it was just a different incarnation of JJ and Jameson. I didn't really get hung up on, you know, like is that the same one from the same universe? Because they were so different in what they were doing and also like their roles in their in their movies that it felt like um like a different version of James and yeah. just well, the same actor. Right, right, right. Um, and I, and I think, I think that's totally fine. I think that's totally fine. In, you know, all these other universes. Right. And shit, it gets a little like, well, okay. But I, I kind of accepted it. I kind of was just like, all right, whatever. Like, I'm that, not that's really what, sure. You that's, can't really recast him. Like, J, like J.K. Simmons is like, like, eerily perfect. I think I said that before. He's eerily perfect for that role so it's like you can't really recast him you know like you just 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 cast him again and just, he's just a different person you know yeah it yeah just made me happy you know but yeah, um, I, I was kind of I was wondering if that was just the situation because that was like the logical thing because it wouldn't really I yeah. thought they were gonna like write in that he was gonna be one of the guys who got like teleported to the world. <laughs> right. It would be actually now that I think about it in a theoretical sense that would be a really funny way to have written this movie where like Spider Man kind of ties all ends and like the universe is about hilarious. to like collapse because of it, but they don't realize that JJJ is the last one that they need that to send was back. So funny. And <laughs> Jonah was like, he's the catalyst. <laughs> yes, and he's That's like the so the. Funny. But yeah, uh, I'm I, I'm totally fine with the fact because yeah, I think it's great. Be flexible. Like, yeah. let a movie be a movie and just like say that this character yeah. is someone different than what he looks like or what he exactly. was in another film. Right. I think that's fine. I think that's great. And uh, he was also, just so perfect. Another weird question. So at the end of the film, Peter goes to uh, Lay's grave and Happy's there. And Happy says, I knew him through Spider-Man. So you knew her through Spider-Man but you didn't know, you don't know who Peter Parker is? Yeah. So, like, how do you, I mean, like, I can accept that, you know, like, the timeline was probably changed where, like, he just didn't know Spider-Man's identity. That's, that's fair. Um, but it is kind of like, but you knew his mom or, or his aunt or whatever. <laughs> it's just like, kind of weird. Yeah, but, yeah I, I'm kind um, of, when it comes the whole logic around spider-man everyone forgetting peter parker because what does that mean the, the, exactly everybody forget like so they just forgot peter parker was a person so yeah. meaning that i think people just don't know his identity they, they, yeah. they, they know who spider-man is but they don't know like who is spider-man but what like, but then like the funny, I think I'm hoping that they'll probably crazy, like address, right? the, they'll probably address this in the future movies about like what the logistics are of this, yeah. because then there's also the questions like, okay, did you just make everyone forget? Because there's like a lot of videos of 
Peter Parker like being Spider Man that people could look back. It's like, yeah, does he not I have like well. I mean, a birth the magic, certificate? The magic erase that. You know, that's part of the spell. But like, that's the thing. It's like, did did the magic yeah. <laughs> change the events of what happened, or did yeah. did he, they just make people forget? Because if they changed how things All happen, the events happen. Well, yeah, they they when it happens, they get it touches they get it and he says like, um, something like, um. You know, another landmark destroyed by Spider Man or something like that. Did he say yeah. something like that? Or, I don't remember. Or, no, no, no. I think what they lose, I think what you're like, lose is like, I don't, dude, I don't actually know. I, I actually don't know. I thought because when the spell happens, that the Statue of Liberty is like fixed because they destroyed it in that, in that battle, you know? And I just would assume, like, okay, maybe the, the events everything like like reset you know yeah. like it wasn't um so i don't know that, that, that's like a question that's so like broad it's like, okay yeah. everybody doesn't know okay whatever you know? it's kind of it's, it's a it'll be a funny thing because in the context of this film see how they deal with that right so, because it, at, as the ending of this film it's fine it's like okay i don't yeah. need to know the logistics it's, of this to make this movie this work film. Yeah. But if they make a film that follows this and they make that like right. a problem, then it's going to be like, I'm going to, it's going to be like, people are going to start nitpicking it more right. and being like, well, why does that work? Or why does this work? And things like yeah. that. So, I mean, that's also another thing that will be, if they make a sequel, it'll be interesting to see how they write totally. that. Um, I also like, love the scene, like, at the very, we didn't talk about the scene, the very, very end, when uh, Peter goes to MJ uh, coffee shop. And, oh, that was a very strong. That was, was super strong. So fucking good. Where he's just like, he. That's Tom Holland is excellent in this movie. He's super, super good. And that scene was kind of an illustration of how good he is as his character because you see in his face like him making this decision of, you know what, I'm just gonna. I'm going to take my coffee and I'm going to go. And I'm going to uh, accept the fact that I, she's just not going to know who I am. And this is just, I, I, I don't want to go through, I don't want to have uh, the people that I love go through this, which is super Spider-Man, you know, where it's like, that's the whole conflict of his character and having a relationship with MJ. It's like, I have villains, you know, and, and, and him making that decision no dialogue, just the shot of him looking longly at her and that funny moment where he's like, Hi, I'm Peter Parker. <laughs> like, like, okay, Peter Parker. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I thought that, that was such a sweet, great moment to end on. And obviously, him making that classic bright red, blue suit, you know, and homemade suit was great. Just yeah, really yeah. Cool he has no technology either. There's none of the stark technology anymore. Uh, yeah. None of the nanotech. He's, he's on his own. And that's, you know, just a beautiful, beautiful way to end this whole trilogy. Um, I keep reiterating that, but that really was like really striking to me. Because I, yeah. I really just didn't think that, that this is going to end like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Man. It's cool. Spider Man cool. No Way Home. That was Spider Man No really, Way Home. Really surprisingly great movie, in my opinion. And um, I'm so excited to see. I don't even. I'm so excited to see Doctor Strange in the fucking multiverse directed by fucking, fucking the guy, you know? Sam, Sam Raimi. Raimi. The coolest shit ever. Um, hasn't been a movie in a while, so we'll, we'll see how that turns out. Um, the the trailer seems cool. Evil Doctor Strange. It reminded me of um, of Army of Darkness, where the evil ass and the yeah. And the, I was like, oh, that's yeah. cool. We kind of see that again. Um, but uh, but yeah, man, cool shit. Cool. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Cool setup for the future. I think we annihilated this film. We annihilated. <laughs> it, destroyed it. <laughs> Uh, and I think I think that's gonna be it for us, huh? Yeah, dog. Um, All right, everybody. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram. Uh, we post updates 
fucking what are we what episodes are we doing and shit like that. Um exciting <laughs> stuff. Alright everybody. We love you. Bye bye. Bye.